the second half of the sketch is dedicated to men types 2A and 2B. Embodied by our next two team members, Agent A and Agent B. While there are a few differences between men 2A and men 2B, on the whole, most of the features are similar. MEN2 is caused by a gain-of-function mutation in the RET tyrosine kinase gene on chromosome 10. And in this scene, that's RET, as in return to your planet. Not very nice. While chromosome 10 is represented by those 10 fingers held in the air. Also, because we're dealing with an abnormal tyrosine kinase gene product, we've brought in our recurring tyrosine tire swing. There are multiple specific mutations of RET that are possible, which is the reason for the different phenotypic presentations of patients with MEN2. Okay, pop quiz. What do you think of this kid, huh? Alien? Human? I mean, he's so innocent and frail looking. Full of childlike wonder. Wrong! Alien. Come on, son. That was an easy one. That bow tie, by the way, is our recurring symbol for the thyroid gland. The two tumors common to both men 2A and 2B are pheochromocytoma and medullary thyroid cancer. Let's start with the thyroid gland. Medullary thyroid cancer is a malignancy of the parafollicular C cells. So, on the black top of the playground, notice the C cell tiles surrounding the follicular sandboxes. Medullary thyroid cancer has several unique features in men too. First, it occurs much earlier than it would if it were sporadic, i.e. before age 40, consistent with other men's syndromes. Second, it's preceded by C cell hyperplasia, an increase in C cell mass lining the thyroid follicles, which is diffuse and bilateral. It's thought that C-cell hyperplasia may be a precursor lesion to medullary thyroid cancer, and its diffuse nature would explain the multiple and recurrent tumor formations seen in men too. As with sporadic medullary thyroid cancer, patients typically present with a painless neck mass with or without compressive symptoms due to mass effect. Diagnosis is made by examining a biopsy specimen, which will have the characteristic spindle cell nests, secretory granules, and amyloid formation. I'd tell you to check out our thyroid cancer sketch for all the top secret details, but actually, I don't think we included it with this course. You being a trainee and all. Definitely need a certain level of security clearance for that. Pheochromocytoma is the second tumor common to both men 2A and men 2B. Our recurring symbol? Frozen color brand shaved ice. Notice how those two dollops of topping look just like adrenals. Pheos occur in the adrenal medulla and typically develop in 20 to 50% of patients with men too, usually presenting by age 30. Just like their sporadic cousins, men too pheos typically cause paroxysmal hypertension, tachycardia, anxiety, sweating, etc. Like the worst brain freeze of your life. Diagnosis and treatment are the same for run-of-the-mill pheos, so check out the adrenal sketch for more info. While they're multiple and bilateral in more than a third of cases, the good news is that the risk of metastasis is much less than that of their sporadic counterparts, less than 10%. After medullary thyroid cancer and pheo is where men 2A and men 2B start to diverge a little bit. For men 2A, the only thing to remember after that is the parathyroid. Men 2A causes multi-gland parathyroid hyperplasia leading to primary hyperparathyroidism in about 20% of cases. So look for the patient with a neck lump, palpitations, and possibly kidney stones. Men 2B, on the other hand, is a bit less consistent. In addition to medullary thyroid cancer and pheochromocytoma, a Men 2B patient may also have mucosal neuromas and a marfanoid habitus. One note before we dive into Men 2B's unique features. Unfortunately, medullary thyroid cancer tends to be more aggressive in Men 2B, with an earlier onset and an up to 50% mortality rate. Mucosal neuromas are small bumps of nervous tissue that form on the tongue, lips, and buccal mucosa. In fact, virtually every patient with men 2B will have mucosal neuromas, and it's often the first visible sign of the syndrome. Patients may also have chronic constipation, diarrhea, or other GI abnormalities due to diffuse intestinal ganglioneuromatosis, a hamartomatous proliferation of neural tissue in the intestinal muscular layer. Several skeletal abnormalities may be present as well, including lordosis, kyphosis, and lengthening of the long bones that gives rise to a lanky marfanoid habitus. As depicted by Agent B's thin marfanoid physique, MEN2 is typically diagnosed using a combination of clinical features and genetic testing for a RET gene mutation. In fact, any patient with a medullary thyroid cancer or a pheochromocytoma should be evaluated for possible MEN2 syndrome using a combination of imaging, laboratory evaluation, and genetic screening. Quick sum up. MEN1 is caused by an autosomal dominant mutation in the MEN1 tumor suppressor gene, which normally codes for MENIN. Three Ps. 
parathyroid pancreas pituitary. MEN2, on the other hand, is caused by an autosomal dominant mutation in the RET proto-oncogene, which normally codes for a tyrosine kinase. For both MEN2A and MEN2B, remember medullary thyroid cancer in FIOS. MEN2A is also associated with parathyroid tumors, while MEN2B often manifests with that marfanoid habitus and those gnarly neuromas. Okay, last test. Miss this one and you're off the team. There's one more alien in this scene that we haven't pointed out yet. And I'm not talking about that alien baby either. That's a freebie. Come on, he's sticking out like a sore thumb. Wrong again. <laughs>